I love this time of the market cycle because everybody believes that once we start going up, that's it. It goes up forever. And we kind of lose sight about what potentially could happen. So what I want to do today is just bring a little bit of reality to kind of take a look at the risks that are out there and what could potentially happen. So this was a piece that uh, was put out by Coindesk. And it talks about how Bitcoin could retrace the 36K before the uptrend resumes from QCP Capital. And again, what I wanna do is just to make sure that everybody understands the risks and they know what potentially could come because as we keep going up and up and up, it seems like we have a lot of the uh, people who are just immune to this. And they say, you know what, this will go up forever. So when we start to see like a pullback, I want you to be aware that, hey, this is not unnormal. So this is what we got. The January launch of a Bitcoin spot ETF is expected to face subdued demand initially, which could lead to a sell the news scenario. And I, we've talked about that on the channel quite a bit because we know that once it gets approved, again, it's not a, a question of if it will be, it'll be when. But once that actually happens, you may see a little bit of a lull between the actual institutions and the people that actually want to buy it as their customers come in because they're going to need a little bit of time to actually talk to them and really say, hey, this is why it is. This is why we want you to invest into it and move forward. Now, they're going to get uh, early investors, obviously, but to get their horde or their most of the people, that's going to take some time. And they state uh, it's likely that the actual demand for the Bitcoin spot ETF at the start will fall short of market expectations. Uh, we expect topside resistance in the 45 to 48 region. And we expect a possible retracement to 36K levels before the uptrend resumes. So I'm just gonna ask you a question right now. Do you think, can you hold it? Can you understand or can you feel like, okay, if, it, if it's at 44K now and we go all the way back to 36, 35, 34K, would I be okay with that? Now, a lot of you right now are saying, yeah, because we're, we've been going up for quite some time, but it's a little bit different, especially if you're new, when you start to see those prices fall. And I'm just here to tell you that the short term does not matter. Keep your eye on the prize, which is the long term. So QCP writes that uh, this is interesting that Ether is seen as a potential secondary investment option with an anticipated market shift from Bitcoin. They say that Ether might also be an interesting laggard play. This kind of headline excitement could create some speculative uplift for the ETH price, whether it is warranted or not. And I got to tell you, me as an Ethereum holder, I own a ton of different cryptos, but as an Ethereum holder, I don't care what it is, speculation or real world utility. When the price goes up, that makes me happy. And uh, hopefully it actually works out like that. But let me just think about that in the comments section. And now let's just shift gears real quick, because now that we understand the risks and we understand that the, the potentialities of what could actually happen. This was interesting, I thought. Most voters think U.S. presidential candidates should have an informed view on crypto, a new grayscale poll. Now, you have to take polls with a grain of salt because it's not like they ask every single person in the, in, in the nation what they think. It's just a small sample size. But there was one statistic down here that really blew me away. And it's, it's going to show you why the people that do well are the ones that are not risk averse. So this is what we got. 73% of voters say U.S. presidential candidates should have an informed view point on an innovative technology, including crypto, a new survey conducted by the Harris Poll. When you, of course, when you see that, you're like, oh, great, then we're all going to be pro-crypto. Not really. What it comes down to is this. 40% of investors say their future portfolio will have crypto in it. Younger voters, such as Gen Z and millennials, own more crypto than equities. Not surprising. It's a lot uh, easier, a lot faster. And younger people today, they're not opening accounts. It's a lot easier for them to open up a hot wallet, whether that be uh, MetaMask or Titus or Phantom or something like that. And it's a lot easier for them to do that and swap things than to actually open up some kind of trading account. But this is what was interesting. 46%, roughly half of the voters surveyed are waiting for additional policies before making the plunge into crypto. Now, right there, if that doesn't show you the kind of mentality that a lot of people have, it'll make you understand why it's you getting into crypto, investing into it, certainly has risk, but there is a massive upside. Now, on this channel, it's not financial advice. I can't tell you what to do. I'm not your dad. But again, when you take a look at this, you can understand the mentality of people and they kind of just go, yeah, I got to wait for someone to tell me it's okay to do these things because I'm kind of nervous. Not going to make it. Anyhow, on that piece... Also, more good news, uh, Ripple approved as virtual asset service provider by Central Bank of Ireland. And just real quick, 
The registration paves the way for Ripple to offer digital asset services across the European economic area under the MICA regulations. Uh, this is great news because it means they can actually branch out into Europe. Markets and crypto asset regulation come into force at the end of 2024. Ripple General Counsel Stuart Alderati previously said it could passport its European license to the rest of the 27 states in the block, which is, of course, this is good because then Ripple can kind of branch out across Europe, offer these, these crypto services, whatever they may be, some kind of custody, some kind of service, whatever else it is. But when it says right here, it comes into force at the end of 2024, this is a very long-term play. When I first read this, I'm like, this should be great for the price. And of course, today, XRP is down almost a percentage point. Not that that's something to be made fun of. It's just that I think Ripple is playing the long game. So if you're an XRP holder, hey, may work out for you. Just going to be a little bit longer. So I like where the direction of that. And also, I like the direction that Near is going. Near is also one of my holds. Everything I talk about on this channel, I hold. I hold XRP. I hold Near. I hold Arbitrum. I hold Bitcoin. I hold a whole host of things. So when I see these things, I'm like, great. This is good for my bags. And this is from Near Protocol. It says, give it some fuel, we're gonna send this to Orbit. And what they're doing is they're partnering up with Arbitrum, which is a layer two solution for Ethereum. And Arbitrum Orbit integrates Near DA, unlocking new opportunities for Ethereum roll-up developers. And it says, learn why right here. I thought this is, this is great, but first of all, what the heck is DA? Well, DA is data availability. So the Near Foundation actually launched this data availability, offers secure, cost-effective for ETH rollups and Ethereum developers. This was just back in November 8th. So I want you to think about right now, how many layer two solutions are out there for Ethereum? How many do you think are actually gonna need data availability to actually store all the different data that they have? Do you think this could actually play into a part? And you understand why I actually invested in Near, and maybe you should take a look at that. Again, not financial advice, do your own research, but there's a reason why I like Near. It's that. It's also, here's from one of the uh, founders, Ilya. He said, today, Near Protocol is the number one in daily active users across all of Web3. Super exciting to see. And he used Artemis, and you can see that Near Protocol, daily active addre addresses, 1.5 million. And in uh, the three months, it's uh, increased by 132%. It's just edged out Tron. And I know Tron, when I went to South Korea, essentially what everybody told me is that the reason why people use Tron so much is because they like to use Tether on the Tron rails because it's so cheap. I personally don't think it's that cheap, but whatever. And then we got Binance Coin and then Solana, the darling of the cycle, I think, at 723,000, which is a 255% change. So that is big news. And again, Near, I think is gonna be massive hit for Web3. If you take a look at DAP Radar for all the different top DAPs that are being used right now, Kaiching and Near is always number one. It is the number one, and it's been like that for like four or five months or so. Then we got Gamefly, which is on scale. Another uh, actually crypto that I actually own. It's a it's a gasless chain for Web3. Pixels, my man Kagi loves this game. Pixels uh, on the Ronin 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 change. Sweat Economy again, another one of my cryptos that I own. Some surprising. Rob mentions it, and it's also on Near and number five. Uh, Jupiter Exchange, again, one of my favorite exchanges right next to Orca for the Solana decentralized exchange or DEXs. And one I hadn't really thought of, I just, I realized this, Play Ember is also one near. What's Play Ember? It's a Web3 gaming studio for mobile devices. And I got to be honest with you, the games are kind of ridiculous to me, but it's, it's, it's not about me. It's about the market. And they're making, they're rolling out a bunch, a ton of different games, and they're available right now. I'll link that in the description so you can actually check it out. But yeah, it's a bunch of free to play games and play to earn, and they're all goofy little games and might be the next big thing. Anyhow, link in the description, you can check that out. Um, also, more good news uh, these guys got frozen. Three Arrows Capital, which was essentially one of the big reasons why we had such a hiccup in the last uh, 2021 bull market. They were just asked to, or excuse me, ordered to uh, freeze 1 billion of their assets for three arrows capital. This is from the liquidator Taneo. Here's what's going on. So the order, which was filed on Monday, just went into effect. It, bounds, it bans co-founders Suzu and Kyle Davies, as well as Davies' wife, Kelly Chen, from transferring or selling assets, amounting to 1.14 billion. First of all, why do these guys have access to this? This makes absolutely no sense to me. Why do they have those funds? Those are funds from Voyager. Those are funds from FTX. Those are funds from a different, bunch of different exchanges. There is no reason they should have access to that because they bailed with it. 
and essentially screwed all the uh, all the people that really own those assets. It's amazing to me. But the wheels of justice move slow. Three Arrows Capital filed for bankruptcy in July 2022. The latest court action results in the ongoing efforts by liquidators, Taneo, to secure 3AC's assets, seek recoveries from the founders and Ms. Chen, the wife, with respect to the collapse of 3AC and meet the firm's obligations to its various creditors. And I got to tell you, I got to take my hat off to these guys because they're actually doing their job. So good job uh, for the liquidators to actually do what they're supposed to do, Celsius. And I'm glad that it actually happened. On top of that, and don't forget, these guys aren't running free. There's a uh, zoo. This is from October 6, 2023. And I had forgotten about this. Taneo, a liquidator of the fund, said in a statement on September 29th that they received a committal order against Zoo after he failed to cooperate with the firm's liquidation investigation despite an earlier Singapore court order compelling him to do so. The order sentenced Zoo to four months in prison. I know it's not like 40 years, but hey, it's a step in the right direction. I'm glad this guy's in jail. And hopefully it can all work out for the creditors. But I think this is a net positive and also uh, positive as far as like wallets and what's going on. Trezor, which I didn't know they did, weren't doing this. They just add support for, for Solana and SPL tokens. Uh, SPL tokens are Solana program library, all the different tokens they have. I had no idea that they didn't offer that service until today. Amazing. So if you're a Trezor holder, I personally don't use it, but uh, that's good for you. Uh, now you can actually hold uh, as much Solana and Bonk and <laughs> Dogwood Hat or whatever it is that's, uh, that can be in your portfolio, and that's great. Also, speaking of, uh, that's a cold storage wallet. Speaking of hot wallets, uh, this is the one that I use, uh, Phantom. Phantom Wallet shows that Bitcoin, no longer stagnant uncle. What they did is, I'll just break this down. Phantom Wallet, it is a, is a wallet that you can have in your browser on your computer, on your phone, and it's pretty much Solana based. It also has, it has Solana, it has Ethereum, it has Polygon, and now it integrated Bitcoin and ordinals onto the wallet. I gotta tell you, it's one of my two that I love to use. Uh, the other one being Titus. And actually I'm just gonna, what am I gonna do? Make this super simple. Let's just jump on my phone. I'm gonna show you what, what happened, how you can turn this on if you have Phantom and how this works, and also using DEXs. Okay, so here we are on my Phantom wallet. If you wanna turn that function on, I just go to the upper left-hand corner for the cog. You click on Active Networks, and then it's right there. Again, Solana is on by default. It's a Solana wallet, really. But it's got everything for Ethereum and Polygon and Bitcoin. You click that on, you can send and receive Bitcoin, also everything with ordinals. What I do like about this wallet as well is, first of all, you can have all your NFTs. Stick them right there. And then also, you see on that bottom middle, it's a little two arrows. You can swap everything. So people always ask me, Rob, you're an American citizen. How did you get bonk? How did you do that? Well, it's very simple. So like over here, you can, I only have point, let me see. Now I have point zero zero six. So I'm going to take a look for, oh, there it is, bonk. And I can get <laughs> 33,000 because bonk's not really worth too much. And then I can do this and it just kind of goes off without a hitch. So that's how you do it right there. The problem I, I think with, with Phantom is that when we're taking a look at Bonk, if I search for Bonk, you can see there's a bunch of them, right? So Bonk, Bonk Smith, Bonkers, Bonkers, Bonk Cap, Bonkzilla. I mean, you get, you get the point. So what I always tell people to do is if you go and you go into CoinGecko and you take a look at CoinGecko or CoinMarketCap, it doesn't matter. But you see right here on um, Bonk, it says the contract address. So if you copy the contract address for Bonk, and then what you wanna do is you wanna come over here and you wanna put this into the little search option right there. So instead of just looking for Bonk and you get a bunch of different uh, you know, imposters, if you paste that and you click search, what would be great is if it actually brought them up, but it doesn't. So this is one of those things where like, you can be sure the thing that you got, the asset is the right one because of the contract address. Now watch this, I'm gonna use Titus. And for Titus here, it's very simple. See what's got, a, and this is why I like Titus, it has more functionality, it's very simple, very easy. So you got the assets, swap again, and Solana, I mean, excuse me, uh, Titus already has Ethereum, Optimism, Polygon, Solana, and Bitcoin. It's already built in already. So this isn't an upgrade, this is just something it already does. And then, of course, you can have your NFTs, Lend and Borrow is right there, DeFi, it's pretty cool. And you click on Swap for Solana. 
and it's going to say Jupiter. Great. So it's going to already integrate with Jupiter again, one of my favorite DEXs. And it's here it says pay Solana, which I only have 0.15. Receive. I'm going to click on that. And see what it says right there, token, name, address, or symbol. I'm going to paste that same thing in there. And oh, look at that. The right correct bonk is there. And I can do whatever I want to. So again, uh, I'm going to link both of those wallets in there. I would suggest that you take a look at both of them, see which one actually works for you. I use both, but uh, that is it for today. So look, if you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up and start subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. Now, as time moves on, especially going into the halving, we're going to start to see a massive acceleration. So get your information somewhere that you trust. That's it. So thanks so much for stopping by. I do appreciate you and I'll see you on the next one.